Hello. This video is part of a series of videos on making CAM in the Bechtel Center at Purdue. In the last video, we went and imported our table model, imported our, imported our stock from our progressions model, and imported our model from, from our progressions model. Now, we're just about ready to switch over to the manufacture tab and actually start manufacturing our part and making CAM for it. But there's one thing we need to do first, and that is rename our parts. So we need to rename our parts stock, model, and fixture, depending on what they're doing. In this case, this first one is our stock. It's, this, it's what we start off with. Next one, this is not actually our stock. This is part of our model. So I can press F2 or rename, and I can, pre and I can just type in a new, a, a new name. In this case, I'm going to type it in model, because there's two models, and the name is model one. As I said, you can either press um, F2 or Fn F2, depending on your keyboard, or right click and press rename here. There you go. And then for this last one, I'm going to name it fixture. There we go. With everything renamed, we're ready to switch over to the manufacturer workspace. To do that, click up here on design and switch over to manufacturing. Great. Manufacture tab is where we actually make CAM for all of this. So first thing we need to do is check our units. And then here we can see that our units are inches. That's good, that's correct. If our units were in millimeters, then we click this change active units button and change them to inches. Now, we need to create a setup. And a setup is just a, a long series of operations, or maybe not that long, that are executed in order one after the other. In this case, you can do that by either clicking Setup or Setup, Create New Setup. There we go. So there's a lot here. So let's just, let's just start covering it. First important thing is this operation type. And here you have milling, turning, cutting, or additive. In this case, we are milling. Turning is on a lathe. Cutting is on something like a laser cutter or a water jet. And additive is something like a 3D printer. In this case, we're milling, so I'm going to select this. See that it changes from a cylindrical, cylindrical thing to a square thing, which is good. That makes sense. Next, we can click on this machine and select our machine. There you go. And these are my recent machines that I've used before. For you, you would go down to My Machines and Cloud, and you can see that there's a bunch of machines here. And in this case, because I imported the table for the VF2, I'm going to select the VF2. However, if you don't have this, if you don't have a list of machines here, what you do is you cancel out of all of this, go up to this little icon up here, go to preferences, manufacture, and there's this enable cloud libraries button. Make sure this is checked. If you if it is checked and you still can't see your your libraries, uncheck it, recheck it, and take and take another look. If that still doesn't still doesn't solve it, come into the Bechtel Center and we can help you out. With that checked, we can go back into our setup, select our milling operation again, and we can select our appropriate machine. Like I said, I imported the VF2 table, so that's what I'm going to use. If you imported the SR100 table or the VF4 uh, table, then that's what you would use instead. Cool. This might take you in a second. There we go. Next thing is our WCS. This is basically telling the telling the CNC where its zero point is, like zero zero on a coordinate plane. And the way we do that is we need we need to set it to this little point here. And the way we can do that is we can change our origin from stock box point to selected point, and then we can select this central point. Now, besides the location, the other important thing is orientation, and that can be done. And in this case, this is the correct orientation. It should be Z up, Y back, and X to the right. However, if your orientation is not correct, what you can do is you can change this from model orientation to select Z axis and X axis. And in this case, it's asking me to select a Z axis. And the Z axis will be anything that's vertical. So in this case, I'm just going to select the side of this jaw. There we go. Now we can see the Z axis is facing the wrong way. So I'm going to flip the Z axis. There we go. Now it's asking me to select the x-axis, which is anything that's going left, left to right. 
like that. And because the x-axis is already facing the right way, I don't need to select anything new. Great. The next thing is our model. And here we're going to select. And we don't want to select it here because if we have an assembly or multiple models that are put together, like we do actually, see that we're only going to select the top model or the bottom model. And in this case, our stock is even getting in the way. So what we can do to solve this is we can expand this model section over here. We can expand it, expand it again, and we can click on model. In this case, we have two models. We're just going to select both of those. Next is our fixture. We're going to check this box because we do have a fixture model. And we're going to select our fixture. You can see why renaming, our, renaming all of our parts made this a little bit easier. Go over to the next tab, and we can select our stock. Because we have a stock modeled as a, as a model, we can go and change this from relative size box to from solid, and we can select our stock. You can see that our stock dimensions are what we set them in the previous section. Next, we have part position. So you'll see, here's a model of the table. And you see here we have our vices that are not on the table. They're floating above and to the left, and that's just not correct. In order to do that, we can change our part attach point to selected point. And if it doesn't automatically move onto the correct place on the vice, on the, on the table model, you can go and select this little point that's sticking out as your selected point. In this case, it did move properly for me, so I'm going to go on to the next tab. And this tab is important things for posting the program or converting it into a format that the machine can understand. First important thing is this program name slash number. In our case, this can be any four-digit number with the exception of numbers starting with a nine. So no 9000, 9001, 9999, none of that. Other than that, you can pick any four-digit number you want. So I'm going to pick 1843. You can pick any number that you would like. Next thing is this machine WCS offset. And WCS offset should be one on a milling machine. Great. Now that's completed. There is one, one last thing that I would like to show you. And that is if you hover over basically anything in Fusion, it will give you a detailed description. And you can see here that the WCS offset identifies the desired workspace coordinate system, WCS, for the job. It is the responsibility of the post-processor configuration to map this number to the actual WCS on the machine. And you can do this for basically anything. Programming name and number has a similar description. And so if you're ever confused about what something is, start by just hovering over it and seeing if you can get that little bit of information and seeing if that helps. And as always, if it doesn't, come into the Bechtel Center and we can help you out. Great. Now, if you're done with that, congratulations. You have made, you have made your first setup. Now, this machine gets in the way sometimes. So I like to go and expand this and just turn the eye off so that I have a little bit of cleaner of a workspace. There you go. Congratulations. You have made your first setup. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will cover probing and, and how to set that up. Thank you, and have a good day.